Welcome to the Naked Forex webinar. My name is Walter Peters. I'm a full-time trader. I wrote the book Naked Forex. And today we're going to talk about three different methods that you can use to jump in on the trend. So three naked trend continuation patterns. And at the end of the session, if you'd like to see you know, any market, any time frame, we can look at it from a naked point of view and I can give you my take on it so you can see kind of how I would look at it without any indicators. So that's, um, that's pretty much today's session. So the first one I want to talk about, um, this pattern is an interesting one and we've had a, we've actually had a few of these recently and probably one of the better examples of this would be with the yen. Although actually that's not very good as a textbook example. Let's see if we can find a better one. Um, let's see here. Actually, we have one. Actually, let's take a look at, um, I think it's the peso. And I'll show you an example of this one on the Mexican peso. This is actually really cool because it's a live market example. Um, in other words, it's unfolding right now. So you can see kind of how I see these. Um, I know it's, you know, it's, it's always kind of a, do you really want to go back and look at old charts where you know what's already happened. I don't really tend to wait what happens after the signal when I look at old examples because uh, it doesn't really matter whether whether the trade would have worked out. I just want to show you an example of what it looks like. But let me show you one that's unfolding right now. And the Mexican peso right here. Okay, so I've got so what I've got here is an eight hour chart. All right. Um okay so there you go. So this is an example of a a possible f uh, failed one, actually. This is interesting. Um, this is an eight hour chart, and I'll just kind of explain everything here on my chart. Uh, I've got a trend line drawn in here, which I don't typically do, but sometimes it can be useful. I don't, I don't look at trend lines as you know hard and fast spots where you know I, I'm, you know, I'm looking to trade right off of that. And, you know, same with support and resistance. They're not. You know, I don't look at support and resistance as down to the pip or something like that. Like the market's going to go to that place and turn around at that spot. You know, they're more squishy, fat beer bellies, so to speak. They're not precise moments on the chart or precise prices. But these are all the support and resistance levels that have been identified on this eight hour USD Mexican peso chart. And then um, I've got, well, you can see here I was looking to sell at 18.8800. I didn't actually take that trade and take profit down here. It would have been a good trade, but it would have worked out in terms of profit. But, and then there's a further targets down here. But what I want to focus in on is this area right here, because this is the first setup that I like to trade sort of with the trend. And it's called the squeeze play. And if you guys have any questions, post them in the chat box as we go. But um, you're not distracting me or anything like that. So with the squeeze play, uh, the way that it works is I look for an established trend. So obviously with the Mexican peso, it's been going down here for some time. And then what, we're, what, we're, what we want to see here is we want to see the market lock into uh, where it gets stuck between a rock and a hard place, so to speak. So that would be between this support and resistance zone here, which is, you know, 18.5034. So we'll call it 18.5035, right? That's the support level. And then the um, trend line actually funnels the market towards that support and resistance level. Now, it doesn't really matter if the trend line is going down and pushing it down into support or pushing it up into the resistance. The point is, the trend line wins in this case. It almost, almost always wins. Not always. And you can see here, it looks like this is going to be a case where it loses. But that's okay because this actually didn't give you a solid signal yet. It was just kind of unfolding. So let me show you how I would trade this. Actually, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. I know sometimes on these webinars, it's a little bit difficult to see everything. So it's, it's nice to have a, a really close up look. So that's what I'll do for you here. Now what, what you'll see is the markets hit the trend line, came down, hit the 
the horizontal level, came back up, hit the trend line, came back down, hit the horizontal, came back up, hit the trend line, came back down. And then finally, now you can see it looks like it's popping. Now we don't know what this candle is gonna close at. My guess is, let's see, these should open at eight. So, so right, so this is a new candle. So it's got a long ways to go. A, yeah, let's see, eight to eight, six. Yeah, it's got a long ways to go. So we don't really know what it'll end up looking like. But if, let's say that we had seen it at this stage, which is, this is what the market looked like last time I looked at it. I haven't looked at it since the Asian Open. So um, what you'd be looking for here is the market to pop lower than all of these lows over here. And you really wanna see, an, the, one of the keys that I look for with the squeeze play is you wanna see a really well-defined support and resistance zone, okay? If you're looking at a chart where it's not well defined, and I'll give you a quick example, um, the yen is a great example of where it's not well defined. That's why I didn't want to use that one as an example. Let me show you. This actually is uh, a similar setup. However, it's really sloppy. So whether you draw the trend line here or you draw a sharper one here, um, and then the question now becomes, where is your horizontal level? See, because if your horizontal level is here, then you've already seen the market go beyond um, that and make a couple of false breakouts, which I don't like to see with this pattern. And if you draw it up here, then it really only hits the horizontal level once right here. And then all of these moves up here, up here, up there, and so forth, didn't really even hit the level which means it's not really a squeeze play. So this one's really tricky. It's not, the, and the markets aren't always perfect, but this is one of those situations where I would look at this and I go, you know what? It's, it's not, it doesn't fit nicely in the box of the squeeze play. So I, if I'm gonna, if I'm, if I'm bent on trading the squeeze play, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily trade that one. So this is a better example because it's so clean here. And sometimes it just looks cleaner when you have a higher time frame chart. But in this case, it's very, Nice, it follows the trend line. And what we would expect is basically two likely scenarios. And, and what's happening right now is actually one of the um, ones that doesn't really happen that often at all. So um, it's, kind of, it's kind of rare that you would see what's happening right now. Now we don't know what this candle is gonna look like and things could totally change and all that. But typically what will happen is you will see the market fall through the floor here, okay? And then eventually it'll make its way back up and hit this horizontal level and that's kind of a good place to sell or it hits this trend line and hits, hits it with a bearish candle. And what would a bearish candle look like? A bearish candle would look something like this, right? So that would be what your bearish candle looks like, something like that. A big red fat candle would be a nice bearish candle, something like that. So it's not gonna be a neutral candle that looks something like this at all. It's gonna be something that's kind of big and fat. You know, that's a bearish candle. It doesn't have to be a kangaroo tail or a big shadow, but just something bearish. So this candle right here would not qualify as a bearish candle. This one would be pretty good. That one would be pretty good. This one would be nice. That one would be okay. Uh, that one would be nice. So that's the kind of candle I'd be looking for back up here off the trend line or the horizontal level. Now that's that's kind of a typical squeeze play. It'll it'll squeeze out. Now you could put an order below these lows here or below this low would be the lowest low and just get clicked in when that hap when it goes down there. However, what will what will what will happen sometimes is you'll get what we what we affectionately call the rhino, which is a false squeeze play. It's a failed one. And that typically happens where you get a so in this case you'd have a bearish candle down here and then the very next candle comes right back up and engulfs it or nearly engulfs it. And so if you added those two candles together, you would have a kangaroo tail, right? Um, or you actually just get a kangaroo tail, bullish kangaroo tail on the, on the breakout, which means if you put your order down here, you get clicked in and then it comes right back up and it just looks ugly. And I'll give you an example of this on the Kiwi because we actually had a trade on this one. If you follow my trades, the Kiwi weekly chart gave us a great example of this recently and there it is yeah so this is a squeeze play on the weekly kiwi 
but it turned into a rhino. So it was like a false squeeze play. So the market was following this trend line. It pushed it right up into this horizontal level, which was defined over here. And then it gave us this candle. Does everyone see that? So this, so once it, once it was doing this, I was thinking, yeah, buy. Okay, I'll, hold on a second, I'll show you. I gotta get rid of my, uh, yeah. So when I'm looking at it here, what am I thinking? I'm thinking, yep, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna buy, I'm gonna sell. <laughs> so finally, when this candle happens, and we have a, a kangaroo tail, it's a false breakout, it clears out all, it's above all these highs over here, and so now I'm thinking sell, and I actually sold, and it came down, and it came really close to my target down, my first target, but um, I moved my stop to break even, and it actually um, stopped me out at break even up there, um, you know, last week. So now here we are this week. So, um, and I typically move to break even a little bit earlier than some people would. I know it doesn't seem like that on a weekly chart because you go, what? You know, you were up, you know, you were up 200 pips before you moved to break even. That's pretty quick on a weekly chart for the, maybe not so much for the Kiwi, but for a lot of pairs it would be like for the pound or something. So yeah, so anyway, so that's an example of what you would call a bullish squeeze play that turned into a rhino. So rhinos are when you basically know it's it's gonna fail, right? So so those are the two likely situations. Remember, you have to have a, a trend before you even see this pattern. It can't just happen like in a sideways directionless market, right? So you really wanna see the market going in one direction, following the trend line, and then running into some horizontal support or resistance, and it just starts banging its head against that. And again, like I said, normally what you'll get is a pop, and then it pulls back, hits the trend line, and falls away, or you get a pop, it pulls back, hits the horizontal level, and then falls away, right? So one of those is usually, um, and so the, the, the trigger, it doesn't have to, it, you don't sell right when it hits the trend line and you don't sell right when it hits the horizontal level. You can choose one of these. You sell when it gets there and then it gives you this, the bearish candle, right? You can't just sell on a neutral candle. So I'm always waiting for that candle to tell me, yeah, it's gonna push off that trend line or yes, it's gonna push off that horizontal level. Does that make sense to everyone? Are you following? The squeeze play, does that make sense? And again, if you see the rhino, you know it's game, game over. Don't go with the trend, actually take the reversal. It's a better bet. Are there any questions about this or is everyone pretty cool on the, on the squeeze play? Does it make sense? Let me know if anything's weird or whatever. If you think, if you think, well, I don't, I don't really get this. What's, what's happening, man? Can you repeat the basic theory? Okay. Yep. Sure. No problem. So the, the, it, the basic idea is that one, we're in a trend, okay? So we're in a downtrend on the Mexican peso. Two, you've got a, a trend line that seems to be capturing the market, even if it's just recently. And three, you've got a horizontal level that the market can't break, but because you've got the trend at your back and because the market, and here's the critical part here, this is really why the squeeze play is a naked Forex pattern for me, because it can it really, um, it's, it's a, it's a, a chart example of a naked forks principle. It's a very concrete and simple example of this principle, which is more touches, more frequent touches on a zone equals breakout. That's really the whole, um, and I'm glad you asked this question, George, because it's a great question, George, and it, it really is what the squeeze play is, is all about. Um, what you tr a lot of times, what you're trying to do when you're talking about you know trading price action, trading naked patterns, you're you're trying to f um, fit into some rules and interpretation of the candles, and really, what the squeeze play does is it defines. It's, it's a graphical representation or a pattern representation of this principle, which, it, which is this. If the market keeps hitting as um, a horizontal level and it keeps doing it quickly and over and over again, in other words, it hits it, maybe spends a candle away, hits it again, a candle or two or three away, hits it again, another candle away, then hits it again, it's gonna break through that level. And here's a great example over here. If you count all of these candles, so if you're looking at this 
chart, look at this right here. Count all of the candles here that actually landed on this zone. I would argue that, let's say that you don't count these three, and that could be argued that you should, but anyway, we'll just say one, two, two out of three, out of four, out of five, out of six, three out of seven, four out of eight. So you know what I mean? Like all, all of these candles keep hitting this level, you know it's eventually gonna break out. Then what does it do? It comes back, touches it, and then falls away. Touches again, and then finally falls away. That's kind of what we're, we're doing here with the squeeze play, George, is we're saying, look, one of the principles is if the market keeps hitting a zone in quick succession, so these are frequent touches. I'm not talking about a double top or a double bottom. I'm not talking about it hits it, spends 12 candles away, hits it again, and then spends another 10 candles away. That's not, you know, that's a double top, that's a double bottom. What we're talking about here is a market that hits it, spends a little time away, hits it again, a little time away, hits it again, and again, and again, and again, and then finally it'll pop. Uh, again, but that doesn't look like, <laughs> it actually doesn't, it was looking really good all week <laughs> until, until this current candle. But the good news is if you stick to the rules here in waiting for the market to print a bearish candle off the trend line or off the horizontal level after the breakout, just to make sure that you're not in a rhino, you, um, you avoid trades like this one. This is actually quite rare. It doesn't, doesn't do this very often. Occasionally it does, but the more likely result is that it will break through, hit your trend line with a bearish candle, and then you sell, or hit the horizontal with a bearish candle, and then you sell, or it'll give you a rhino, and then you just reverse. So, cool. Hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that's cool. Let's move on to the next one. I don't want to lose too much time. All right. So, um, the next one is the pinch. Now, the name was given to me by one of my students, um, Dennis. He's a great trader. And um, he just trades these. He's like one of the top signals providers on his um, signals platform that he uses. But he doesn't trade that often. And people, one of the pe people say that a lot about me. Well, how can you not trade more often or whatever? Um, one of the tricky things um, about trading is like, you know, you often make more money when you take fewer trades. <laughs> and it's, it's paradoxical because a lot of people think they have to be in the market all the time. And really what you have to do is um, control your losses so that they don't eat up your account and destroy it and um, and maximize your winners in, in some form or fashion. There's many different ways to do it. But that's really the the uh, the extent of it. And understanding risk and how that relates to probabilities, that's another key part of that. But um, I just want to make sure that, um, that you understand that Dennis, although he trades this pattern, he trades other patterns, but this is one of the ones that he really loves to trade. He gave it the name. I've traded this pattern over the years. I never really looked at it as, an, as a name like he does, but I love his name and I love the way that, um, that it sort of gets across the idea of what's going on. And that name is called the pinch. So let me show you what a pinch looks like and you will see these everywhere. These happen all the time, folks. Actually, maybe you can suggest a currency pair and I'll see if I can find a pinch for you. So does anyone have a currency pair that you would like to have a look at? And we can do that right now. Which one would you like to see? And I mean, it doesn't matter to me. <laughs> okay, gold against the euro. I'm not even sure that this, I don't think it's going to come up. Let's see. Uh, no. I think I just got gold US, unfortunately, so we'll just have to do that. Uh, gold US is on here anyway. I've been watching silver. I've actually got a trade ready to roll on silver hopefully soon. Not yet. Here we go. Okay. Here's gold. So I I'm going to do gold US dollar because we don't have gold silver. Sorry. But let's see if we can find one. Hmm. Mm mm mm. Actually, uh, almost. Actually, well. Hmm. I, I want a fresh chart because it's just easier to see it if it's on a fresh chart. So I'm gonna do that. Let me pull up a fresh chart. I often see the market in a much. It's much easier to see it with you know with a fresh chart and i don't even mind going on the one hour i wouldn't normally 
suggest trading the one hour, but let's go four. We'll go four, four hour chart. Now it's really messy where it is right now. So we're not going to use the current. It's not, it's not conducive to a pinch. However, we would have had plenty back here. All right. <clears throat> um, hmm. There are quite a few, but I want a really clean example for you guys so that it's easy to see, you know? This is, yeah. Yeah. You know what? Maybe we should just go lower, just go to a lower time frame. That might even be easier. Essentially, what we're looking for here is the market's kind of going in one direction. And then as it's going in one direction, what we're looking for is a, uh, a, a it breaks through a level. And then we want a really clear example of the retouch, which shows you what this is all about. The problem with all these, this is so, this is a lot of sideways chop and I don't really like to... Uh, I want to show you like a nice textbook example. All right, let's go daily then. I'll just go daily. Here's one. Here's one right here. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out with this one is that there's a pretty cool, there's a, like a pretty nice support and resistance level where I've identified it right here, okay? This is at 1230, we'll call it, okay? 1230 and uh, 1230.78 to be exact. But you can see the market bounced here and then spent a little bit of time up and then fell. Um, it spent some time, it held for a while here before it fell again. Uh, it tried to get through here and couldn't and fell. But um, what I want to focus in on is what happened over here. So the market traded up here. It fell back down at level again. It held once again. Now you're going to see really clearly on the line chart that the market spent a lot of time bouncing off this level. That's why it's so important, okay? Now what happens here, I'm gonna hit the F12 key and advance my MetaTrader chart. It bounces up a little bit and then boom, it falls through. So now we're on alert. We think that we're in a downtrend because quite frankly, the biggest candles here are the bearish ones. We had a little bit of up move. It's Granted, it's quite choppy here and it's not ideal, but once you break through this, this is a great sign that the market's gonna probably at least go down to this level down here. That's probably, you know, looking at this, I would say, yeah, it's going to at least go down here. Maybe it gets hung up here for a little while around this area, but it certainly looks like it's headed down here to 11 points, 1175, given that it, it, that it finally broke through here. The question is, where do we get in? Well, you can use the pinch and here's how you would use the pinch. You, you wait for your, okay. So the pinch is like this. You look for the market to be in a trend. This is how I trade it. Dennis may trade it a little bit differently. But you look for the market to be in a trend. Again, like we said before, this is what these are. Um, and then you look for a support and resistance zone. Okay. That's the other thing you want to be looking for is a support resistance zone. All right. And then the other thing you want to be looking for here is um, the retouch. Okay. The retouch should be sharp. It should be clean and clear. And if there's ever any doubt, the line chart will point out whether or not it's a sharp, clean and clear retouch. And let me show you what happens next here. Boom, the market goes up a little bit, kind of wicks up into there, but it's still not, hasn't really come back up. And again, look at the line chart. What's the line chart saying? It's, it's, it's moving up, it's up a little bit, but it still hasn't come back up to bounce off that. And now it is. Now look at the line chart. So what we would look to see here for a pinch trade is a very sharp downturn 
away from this zone to confirm that yes, we've broken through this zone, yes, we're in a downtrend, and yes, we are going to respect it. And then yes, we can jump in a trade here. And what happens? Oh, it goes up a little bit more. <laughs> it's right there, and then I think we should get one hopefully. There you go. That is a, because it closed so low down here, it's gonna be a really sharp angle. That's a great look at what a pinch looks like. This is kind of textbook. The only thing I would say is this downtrend here isn't as clean as I would like. It's it's definitely going down, but it's you know it's got some some bounce to it. So I, you know I'll show you in a moment what what I consider to be a really nice trend. But anyway, the point is that this is a this is a great example of what a pinch looks like. So where do you enter? What do you do? Yeah, you call it, you can call it a retest, whatever. The issue I have with calling it a retest is that, um, well, like for example, George, what would this be then? What's this? What's this candle right here? What's that candle doing? Because remember, we broke through, we closed down here, and then what did this candle do? Right? Didn't it? Didn't it come back up and retest? See, this would be a this to me. This would be a retest, but it wouldn't be a pinch. It wouldn't be a pinch at all. And the, and the clue is the line chart's moving up and a pinch with a pinch the, uh, on a downtrend, the pinch would be moving sharply down. So with this, with this candle right here, the retest happens um, with the wick. And uh, yeah, see, this to me would not be a pinch, but it would be a retest. So it's kind of like the moolah or the whammy. A moolah is a double top, but it's a special case of a double top. A whammy is a double bottom, but it's a very special case of a double bottom. Not every double bottom is a whammy, not every moolah is a, not every double top is a moolah, and just like that, not every retest is gonna be a pinch. So when you see this, you know, you might think, oh yeah, I'm gonna sell, I'm gonna put my order below here. But see, this to me is not a pinch, it's not a confirmed bounce until you get that. And then you put your order below the low of that candle, you can put your your stop loss up here above the swing high, which happens to be a little bit higher than the bearish candle. And and where are you gonna head? Well, we've already gone to that first level that I was talking about, which was identified, you know, previously over here. And so we would we would wanna you could slap a trailing exit on it, you could do whatever you want, but the point is you'd be looking for taking profit basically right on this candle or um, or you know, trailing your exit or looking for another possible target down here, that sort of thing. You can see it may have hit that other target there, may have come close, or may have come back up and stopped you out of break even up here, but certainly would have hit that next spot down there. So that's basically what a pinch looks like. So you mean that a pinch is a retest with the close? Uh, no, what I mean is a pinch is when the market breaks through, it's, it's trending, it goes through a support and resistance zone, it spends time out on the other side of that zone, and then it finally comes up and retouches with a very strong candle in the direction of the trend. If you And so here's the thing. You won't find on the line chart that the angle will not sharply move down unless you get a candle that's one, big enough, and two, the close is, the close is far enough to the extreme end of the candle. What I mean by the extreme end of the candle is the low of the candle for a downtrend pinch, you know, a pinch during a downtrend, or the high of the candle if you're looking at a pinch with an uptrend. So the the signal, the, the, the clear piece of evidence that tells you that this is a pinch is this candle right here. And, and also the fact that the market spends candles away from that level. So, you know, all of these candles here are retouching and retesting this level, but it isn't until you get the real strong push off that level that you would want to take a trade, or I would want to take a trade. So that's how I do it. And the same thing, you know, this is the kind of candle that you would have been looking for. Remember we were talking about the squeeze play? You kind of want a candle like this too, to see, you know, at least for a bearish squeeze play, off the trend line or off the horizontal level to tell you that, yep, yeah, this, is, this is the critical piece here. So does that make sense? So the pinch is basically that. Now you will find, let me, I promised I would show you what I would consider to be a really strong trend. And the, uh, oh, we need a refresh here. The um, Chinese Yuan is what I would consider to be a stronger trend than that one that we were looking at before on gold. So this is kind of, and the re reason why, here's a squeeze play right here. So here's your squeeze play. Now, this is an eight hour chart. Does everyone see this, where the squeeze play would be here? It would be in here. 
right? Now this is an eight hour chart and it's gonna be better to look at this from a one hour or a four hour, something, lower time frame, two hours, something like that. But you can see that it's respecting this horizontal level and the trend line's pushing the market up there. So in a lower time frame, this would have been a um, squeeze play. And that's actually when I first started noticing this trend was back at that at this stage right here is when I was thinking, yeah, this looks like a nice uptrend. Then look, it pulls back to the trend line there. Uh, now, what's nice about these retracements is they're so flat. It just kind of flat lines. That's a really good sign that the market's you know willing to keep going higher because it's not pulling back deep against the up moves. It's just kind of flatlining up for a while and then jumping up again. So this is what I would consider to be a really strong uptrend. A nice clean trend, I guess, is really what I'm saying. All right, so let's keep going, guys. Push through, push through. I want to get to the next one. If there aren't any more questions about the pinch, hopefully that makes sense. Again, the line chart will show you if you got a really nice signal candle. I always put my order on the other side of the signal candle for the gold example here. That would be below the low here. And the stop loss would be up here above the, the swing high. And you would reverse everything, obviously, for a sell trade, a sell pinch, or sorry, a buy pinch. All right. I want to talk about another one here. Um, this one I actually have on right now. Uh, this is a an example of a trade that hasn't triggered yet, but I'm waiting for it to trigger. So what we have here is the market's been moving up a little. It hasn't been going that this is a weekly Singapore dollar chart. USD Singapore dollar on the weekly. All right. So the market has been moving up and came down a bit, then moved up again, came down a bit. But what's interesting is this kind of fits um, what a lot of traders would call like a retest. It's a very special type of retest. And again, you want to see this during a, when the market's been going in one direction. You could argue that um, you had one over here too. Um, where the market did this big candle and then retouched it with this candle here. It's a two candle form formation, but this is a bullish one. And for me, I'm gonna buy at 1.3966, stop loss at 37.96, targeting 1.4136, then 42.36, and then 44.26. So I've got three, excuse me, three targets on this one. What is it? It's called the Acapulco. Acapulco trade is basically a two candle breakout formation. So you've got the first candle here, which we call the cliff. And if you're familiar with the cliff divers of, in, of uh, the famous cliff divers of Acapulco, they jump off the big cliffs. All the tourists watch them do it. This is the cliff. And then the next candle we see here is the diver. The cliff must break through that horizontal support and resistance level, which you can see identified here by this green zone. And back here, uh, you know, the market's bounced there a few times. It held there and so forth over here. You can see that and then obviously right here, uh, it broke through, it closed above this high, which is very important. And then just as important, the next candle, the diver candle came back down and just touched the zone and that's it. Now, typically it doesn't really matter if the diver for this bullish Acapulco, if it has a higher high or um, a lower high than the cliff candle, the important thing here is that it retouches or comes close to retouching that zone. Um, as, as far as the zone is concerned, the cliff should really be the highest high when we're talking about bullish Acapulco's or lowest low if we're talking about bearish ones. So in other words, if this swing high over here was higher than my cliff candle, then it would be a no trade. It really is important to me that the market makes a new high here, closes as a new high, and then retouches that zone on the next candle, which of course is the diver. So the cliff is usually the bigger candle. It's the big one that closes near the extreme end of the candle. So in this case, it's a bullish one, so up near the high. And then the diver can be kind of a small little candle. Um, usually it's not as big as the, the cliff. Um, and if it's, you know, if it's a massive candle, it would probably be a no trade actually, because um, it didn't really fit the pattern. So. So they, and they often look kind of like this, kind of little neutral looking candles. That's that's really typical. That's like a this is a textbook example, which is what I want to show you. The other reason I want to show you is because it hasn't triggered yet. So the way that I th there's two ways to do it. You can put the stop loss below the retouch on the um, the diver, 
or above uh, below the cliff here or somewhere else. I actually put it below this little swing. Like if you look on the line chart here, um, that's the, the previous swing high. So I kind of put my stop just down there, just below that little swing high there. So it's safer to put your stop all the way down here, but you, your risk to reward isn't as good. Uh, you'll have a higher win rate though, because you don't get stopped out as much. If you put your stop just on the other side of the diver, you can sometimes get stopped out because it could come back and still retouch it again before triggering. Uh, so, you know, it depends on what you want to do, but you have a much higher reward risk ratio. So you lose more, but you make more when you win. And um, typically these are great patterns to lock into trends. So if this in fact does go all the way up to where it, where it went over here before at 44.30 or 44.20, uh, we can capitalize on that by you know taking profit as we go and locking in our stop and moving our stop and or trailing it or whatever you want to do you know it doesn't matter um, as long as you're maximizing those those real runners so that's basically the acapulco it's a it's a sort of like a two candle pinch or something like that and if you looked at this on a lower time frame maybe you would see a pinch like on the four hour or something but it's an acapulco on the higher time frame right on the weekly so that's basically how i um those are three that I wanted to share with you guys. I think they're fairly simple, they're easy to use, um, probably quite easy to see. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if there are any questions about any of that. Does that, does that, does that all make sense, guys? You cool with all that? Are there any questions about the squeeze play, the pinch, or the acapulco, or any of the rules or logic or anything behind those? I've noticed that a lot of traders really like trading the Acapulco. I don't know why. I don't know why. When I first started testing it, you know, you know, I don't know, seven years ago or whenever it was, um, it was kind of, I was looking for a, you know some rules to get into these these um, trends, and it and I was amazed at how well it worked. But I've just noticed, like, just talking to other traders, traders in my community, they're pretty pretty keen to. Um, you know, if they're trend traders, they're pretty keen to take these sorts of trades. So it can be lots of fun. And your win rate's going to vary. It's going to depend on a couple of things. How aggressive your targets are, whether you move to break even, um, where your stop is, obviously, is the big one. And so if your stop is on the other side of the cliff, uh, you know, you might not get stopped out nearly as much as if it's on the other side of the diver. So that's something to keep in mind, too, you know. Um, are there any charts that you guys want to see now from uh, live charts that we have before we have to shut it down? Are there any charts that you want to see? We can quickly look at those and I can sort of let you in on how I see it. So any charts that you guys are, are trading or looking at trading, I'd be happy to take a look, see what's happening with those. All right, let's take a look. Cable. Let's see. I'm just waiting for my charts to load for you, buddy. And we will be ready to roll. All right. So, the cable. The cable. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, this one, I will say that one of the things I look at, um, and if you follow my trades, you know, one of the things I really like to look at is what are the retail traders doing? So I've got a link that will redirect you to the, the Awanda. It's an Awanda link. If you go to fxjake.com forward slash crowd, you will get, you will see the crowd numbers. Uh, basically, it's what, you know, what is the crowd doing? And right now, a lot of traders are buying silver. So I'm going to be selling silver soon. And the other one is a lot of traders are actually um, going to, are actually, um, buying uh, the pound Swiss, I think. Let me, let me just bring it up so I can show you. So the reason I bring that up is because, yeah, pound Swiss is at 79.77. So here's the pound. It's flatlining. It's come down. You could say that you're in a, um, a squeeze play, right? So how would this be a squeeze play? Well, you'd have a horizontal level and you'd have it like this. The issue I have with this is that that really ruins it. Um, 
And ideally, we we wouldn't have had any of these wicks. Ideally, for a perfect squeeze play, it looks something more like this, where it kept hitting it. You wouldn't have these false breakouts through here. And so, to me, this isn't this is not an ideal squeeze play at all, for, to me. Um, so, yeah, you could go long here on the kangaroo tail, but I wouldn't do that either. To me, I think unless it can get out of this box here, I wouldn't really do much until it gets out of that area. So, for example, let's, let me change the color so it's better. Well, that's probably not better here. If it can trade above this high level and bounce off that, the high of the box at 1.2330, or if it can bounce off this lower end of the box at 1.2160, either one of those would be good. If it could trade higher and then bounce bullish or trade lower and then bounce bearish. But to me, it's not an ideal squeeze play because it has a, a few, that wick is awful. That's a bad one. Then you've got a few more here and then you've got the one that just recently happened because what that forces you to do is you've got to redraw your your uh, horizontal level down here, and I, I haven't even looked to the left here to see what lines up on the left, but if, if, if you draw it here, then it's not really a squeeze play now, is it? Because you've got one, two touches. And again, remember what we're trying to do with squeeze play is multiple touches in quick succession equals breakout. We're trying to graphically represent that with this system. And so that's not happening when you do that either. So it's not, to me, this is not a very good looking chart. I wouldn't trade this unless it broke out of this box. I would look at it probably from a four hour chart and I would trade it if it were to get out of that box. That's what I would do. So I would do something like this. So I would trade a last kiss trade, which is essentially it's a, a, a breakout and retouch of the box itself, right? So if we could get out of this box, bounce higher or, or get out of the box, bounce lower. That would, that, that would be to me the, the right move on that one. Uh, any other ones? So I wanted to show you the pound Swiss just because we just talked about it. So the pound Swiss, a lot of traders are, I can show you if you want to see um, here. You should be able to hopefully see this on my chart. Um, see how silver is at 85.7%. Whenever it gets to uh, 85 or greater is when I like to really go in. So I want to be in the little small group of people making money. A lot of these guys in the in the big majority, they're, they're not making money. These are retail traders, retail traders. Same thing here. You can see Pound Swiss has moved up to the 80 level or close to it. This is updated, I think, every 20, yeah, every 20 minutes. So again, um, to me, that tells me that a lot of people are buying the pound. I mean, specifically against the Swissy. So to me, that's another sign that maybe, um, you know, that's not something that I necessarily want to do. I don't really want to be buying pound Swissy right now. So I think it makes a whole lot of sense to look for a potential sell, but you get you got to wait for that signal. So on the pound Swissy, again, it would be for me the last kiss, which is box up your market, define your low and your high wait for the market to, to um, get out of that range and, and bounce. So break higher and then bounce or break lower and then bounce. But with this many people going long, I would definitely be looking for the market to break lower and then bounce. And the sell would be off of that bounce. So if it were to come down here, break out of the box, spend time down here, come back up, hit it, and then boom, that would be the sell. Have you tested that indeed works as contrarian? Yeah, yeah, it works great. I like to still have a signal, George. You can actually go back in the Awanda um, tools and you can see, you can they actually map price over open positions and you can see that most traders lose. Also, the, you know, the founder of Awanda will tell you, he'll tell you that most traders lose. Um, he's got really good data on that. <laughs> so yeah. So you can actually go back and map price over um, the, over that. It's I mean it's a pretty well known thing. You don't you wouldn't necessarily go against the institutional traders though. We're just talking about going against Ma and Pa Forex trader, right? Yeah. I've got blog posts and stuff on this. We do lots of cool stuff with it. So. And there are other other resources too. It's not just Awanda that has it. So you can find this at a lot of different places. Obviously, it's not just at Awanda. All right. 
All right, guys. Hey, thanks so much for spending time here. I really appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful trading week. And I hope that, uh, you know, that you, you, you take advantage of these patterns when you see them or at least test them. Test them in Forex Tester if you can. See how they're, um, how they're going. Can you recommend one more? Well, you can email me. <laughs> I'm happy to send you more. I'll send you an ebook. I'll send you an ebook. I'll send you one more. I've got an ebook on one actually. There, you can email me. I'll send you. I'll send you the uh, uh, one more uh, trendy setup. Okay, cool. All right, take care, guys. Bye. Have a great day. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks to all of you watching the recording too. See you. Bye.